Hey there, I am Maruf Said, a microbiologist and a science educator. Science is my passion and I'm here to share it with you. You will need blue tip box, yellow tip box and our solutions for DNA isolation. Here we have 1XTE which is composed of TRIS and ETD. Then we have STS. The next we have CTAB and last NACL. Here I have the test tubes which contains the neutron broth and my inoculum, centrifugation machine and autoclave appendrops. Let's start. First, I will label all of the appendrops accordingly. Here you can see appendrop is of 1.5 ml. It can store up to 15,000 microliter component. Prior to this step, in the test tubes, I have added 5 ml of neutron broth that contained the inoculum from the pure culture. After that, I incubated these test tubes for 24 hours. When I took out these test tubes, which contained the neutron broth and my inoculum, I will start preparing the appendrops with the labels of respective test tubes. Make sure you label all of your appendrops correctly so you don't get confused while changing the appendrops. Aseptic conditions are crucial for this step. The test tube contains pure culture inoculum. One more thing about aseptic conditions, before starting this procedure, don't forget to clean your tabletop. And always wear gloves while doing these procedures. I haven't recorded the previous step, but in the test tube we will add neutron broth with the help of pipit 5 ml. Then with the help of a sterile loop, take your pure culture which you have streaked on the neutron agar and dip your inoculum in the neutron broth in the respective test tubes. After incubation you will get your bacterial growth in the neutron broth. So here I have changed my setup to another area. I will take my pipette which is of 100 to 1000 microliter with the help of the blue tip. Now I will take the test tube and pip it out 1000 microliter of neutron broth which contains my inoculum into the appendrop. Likewise I will keep on changing my pipette until I fill all of the appendrops. I will keep repeating this step until all my test tubes are empty into this appendrop. As far as I can remember, I have done this step 3 to 4 times until all my test tubes were emptied. Be very patient with these protocols. So you can see my appendrop containing the broth. Let's get to the next part. So here I am going to load all of my samples into the centrifugation machine. This centrifugation machine contains 24 wells. When you load your sample, make sure you keep an equal distance between another sample. Do you know why we keep an equal distance? It's only because you know the centrifugation machine will spin, so it needs equal weight all around. Here you can see I have kept an equal distance between my samples. Now I will close the lid tightly. Close the lid, you don't need to push it too hard and then set your program to the specific need of the sample. Here I am setting the centrifugation machine to 13,000 RPM. When you want to set your centrifugation machine, make sure to press the store button for a while. Now I am storing the time to 5 minutes and then store your settings and start. The centrifugation machine will start its time as it reach 13,000 RPM. Now take a beaker and discard the supernatant into it. 
leaving the pallet behind. Make sure not to discard the pallet off of the appendrops. You can see the pallet at the end of the appendrops. Carefully do this to the rest of the appendrops. You have to repeat this procedure until all the broth is empty from the test tubes. And at the end you will have a compact thick cell pallet. After completing all this procedure and having a compact cell pallet at the end of the appendrop, now I will use 1x TE buffer. This step is called resuspension. But before resuspending the pallets into the TE buffer, I will remove the remaining supernatant off of the pallets. Carefully with the help of the micro pipette, I will discard off the supernatant off of the pallet. Remember, always change the blue tip with each appendrop. Do not pip it out the supernatant with the same blue tip. Now set the micro pipette to 450 microliter and add the 1XTE buffer into each of the appendrops. The purpose of the TE buffer is to solubilize DNA or RNA while protecting it from degradation. Now with the help of micro pipette mix cell pallet and 1x TE buffer by repeated pipetting and for better results use vortex as well after that. Do this procedure to the rest of the samples as well. Now the next procedure is the lysis of the cell. For that we will need SDS which is sodium dedocyl sulfate. Now setting my pipette to 45 microliter, I will add 10% SDS into the resuspended cells. Here's a tip if you have many samples to work with. Open all the lids of the appendrop so it is easy for you to work with. There will be less contamination as well. Now take 45 microliter of 10% SDS and add it to resuspended cells. So you might be having a question why we use SDS in cell lysis. The interaction between SDS and cell membrane proteins will contribute to cell lysis promoting DNA extraction, while interaction with DNA inhibits subsequent amplification assays. Therefore, a suitable SDS concentration is needed to guarantee high yield and purity of extracted DNA. Now mix thoroughly to ensure proper lysis. If you keep on pipetting and vortexing the sample, you will have a great result at the end. If you want to know that your cells are lysed, you will get bubbling of the sample. A form will be created in the appendrop. This will ensure that the cells are properly lysed. So for a proper DNA isolation, this step is crucial. Because if the cells are not lysed properly, you will not get the inner component which is the DNA. So to break open the cell, you will need to break the cell membrane. Here you can see the forming of the sample. The forming represents that the cells are being lysed properly. So what if there is no forming? When there is no forming, this tells us that our first step was not done properly which was the harvesting of the cells. Make sure you do this step carefully and slowly. If you show hustle in this step, your sample will be leaked out. And a point to remember, with every sample, change the blue tip. 
don't paper the sample with the same glue tip. Here's another tip for you. If you see the bubbling of the sample out of the rims of the appendroph, then don't close the lid of the appendroph. Keep it open so the forms are settled down. After pipetting all the samples, incubate the mixture for 1 hour at 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. Now that we have achieved cell lysis, we'll go to the next step which is protein precipitation. Add 100 microliter of sodium chloride to the mixture. NaCl helps to remove proteins that are bound to the DNA. It also helps to keep the proteins dissolved in aqueous layer so they do not precipitate in the alcohol along with the DNA by neutralizing the negative charges on the DNA so that the molecules can come together. Now with the help of the micropipet, I will mix the sample properly. Constantly mixing the sample gives best result for DNA isolation. Before pipetting, add 1 microliter of C tap to the mixture and gently mix. Then incubate the mixture at 65 to 75 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes or further to 1 hour as well. Make sure that the lid of the caps are closed properly. In between the incubation period, after every 10 minutes, mix the samples 15 times up and down and then re-incubate it. This ensures the proper functioning of the chemicals that are added into the palate. Also, make sure that before adding C-tap, the C-tap must be warm. Now the next step is phenol chloroform extraction. For that you will need phenol chloroform isomyl alcohol with the ratio of 25-24-1. Add an equal volume of phenol chloroform isomyl alcohol to the mixture. This step separate nucleic acid from other cellular substances. A mixture of phenol, chloroform and isomyl alcohol is added to the tissue sample to promote the partition of lipids and debris into an organic phase leaving the DNA in the aqueous phase. Mix gently with the help of pipetting or vortex machine. Then centrifuge the tube at 13,000 rpm for 5 minutes. After centrifugation, you can see the aqueous layer. Carefully transfer the supernatant to a new appendroph tube, which is the upper portion of the appendroph. Make sure when adding new appendroph to the tabletop of your work area, label them correctly. This way there will be less chances of mixing the samples. When transferring the upper layer to the new appendroph, make sure to leave some of it behind. You don't need to be accurate with it. Try not to pick up the organic face. Make sure to use a new glue tip for every transfer of the aqueous layer. Now our next step is chloroform extraction. Add an equal volume of chloroform isoamyl alcohol 24 to 1 ratio to the supernatant. Make sure to use chilled chloroform isoamyl alcohol. The purpose of chloroform isoamyl alcohol is to remove proteins from the preparation of nucleic acid. Now that I have added an equal volume of chloroform isomyl alcohol to the supernatant, make sure to mix it gently. It is a good practice to pipette it before adding it to the centrifuge machine. Centrifuge the tube at 13,000 rpm for 5 minutes. After centrifugation, carefully transfer the supernatant to a new appendroph. And as I have told you before, leave a bit of the supernatant behind. That is only because you don't pick up the contaminated part, which is the organic phase. Now we will head to the DNA precipitation. For that we need sodium acetate. With the help of a micropipet, we will add 50 microliter sodium acetate to the supernatant and mix gently. 
The role of sodium acetate in the extraction protocol is to neutralize the charges on the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA. After adding sodium acetate, add 300 microliter of isopropanol to the mixture. Isopropanol is often the better choice when precipitating DNA from large volumes of solution. Shake the tube back and forth until a stringy white DNA precipitate becomes visible. And then place the ependroff in the refrigerator at minus 20 degrees Celsius for one hour. After one hour incubation, centrifuge the ependroff at 12,000 RPM for 10 minutes. A compact DNA pellet will form. Now for drying the DNA pellet, carefully remove the supernatant without disturbing the pellet. And then allow the pellet to air dry for approximately one hour. After drying, add 20 to 25 microliter of TE buffer. And this was the final DNA disk solution. If you want to see that your DNA isolation is correct, you can then perform agarose gel electrophoresis. With the help of gel electrophoresis, you can see DNA bands, as you can see in this picture. I have performed the gel electrophoresis on these samples. So this procedure worked for the isolation of DNA. You can use this protocol for fungal and bacterial DNA isolation. So, you have successfully isolated DNA from a bacterial culture using this protocol. The purified DNA can now be used for various downstream applications in molecular biology and genetic research. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button.